I was inspired by Sarah Ahmed's um, drawing a complaint. She made a diagram of what a complaint looked like. It was a bunch of scribbles. And I thought, um, I want to play with this a little bit more, expand it, and have a look at it closely to look at what happens when you challenge whiteness in an organization. And in this book, she shows what happens when BIPOC people uh, make com complaints in institutions, organizations. The first thing that happens is that we're encouraged to follow the procedure, follow what it is that the institution uh, tells us that we do when we encounter a challenge. The issue with this is that the institution's tools are based on the values of whiteness, and these are called the master's tools. Is we, we then realize, oh, the system is not really working for us, the policies are not really working for us, there's something that's missing here. And it forces us then into the role of diversity worker, where we become the one to address the inequities that, we, that are experienced rather than the institution doing that. What this does then is point to a need or the need for a new policy. And at the same time, um, people will then experience quite a bit of resistance. Some, sometimes the policies are not even visible, the policies are hidden. So we have to do that digging work of finding these policies. And um, the policies are hidden because oftentimes when we find the policies, we can require and ask that the policies be um, enacted. And that's where things kind of fall apart because institutions and organizations um, often will use the policy as, itself as the evidence for what um, is supposed to happen and what doesn't exist. So they will say, we are a caring institution. They will proclaim this and they will say, we are a caring institution, we are diverse, we value equity and diversity but that becomes it, it stops there. The enactment of those things doesn't actually ha happen. So, um, so what <laughs> then uh, what happens is that the complaints and the challenges that the BIPOC person experiences becomes a tool for the institution to use to refurbish itself. And this uh, refurbishment is not used and that and that term is not used by the institution they actually see this as we're cleaning up or you'll hear we're dismantling the system or we are um we are you know uh reevaluating whatever it is but there will be la language that is used that is that that sort of sends the message that something is being done when really it's just the proclamation that we that the institution uh wants to do something but not that they're actually doing it so um so what this, uh, again, it does is that the organization shows you that, um, that it is addressing the, the problem by making these proclamations rather than actually addressing the problem. By looking at this diagram, you can see that challenging whiteness in an organization can be quite uh, a dizzying process. And this process reveals some of the tools of whiteness, such as uh, screens. The screen acts as a veil itself. It acts as a way that the organization prevents you from seeing what's happening behind the closed doors and gives you the impression that something is being done when really nothing is being done. So in addition to screens, you'll have um, tools like a flipper bat that sends you in a direction, and usually that direction is an exit, an early exit out of the organization. So unfortunately, challenging whiteness in organizations can be tricky for BIPOC folk because of the um, values of whiteness that are entrenched in the institutions.